what is big data? How do you look at it? And how is it going to change marketing? And perhaps how is it going to change markets? Cameras attached to intersections, attached to buildings, uh, medical records being digitized, RFID tags being attached to products and supply chains. Um, all of these are ways for us to collect data. And it's all kinds of estimates about its growth, right? Uh, we believe it's, it's growing 40% a year, just the amount of data in all its forms. Interesting statistic just ran across that the majority of adults with smartphones have them within arm's reach 22 hours of the day. Now, why is that important? Well, for the device makers, that's, that's amazing. But the thing is, what are you using that for? So if you're, if, you're, if you're searching and you're hitting sites, if you're downloading apps, if you're doing things, you're throwing off signals. If you're GPS, you're telling us where you are. If uh, you combine that with the point of sale thing, with, with, with what you might be tweeting and blogging about, you start to integrate this knowledge about people's intention and their, and their behavior. And of course, you apply analytics to begin to predict what they might. That's why next best action, next best offer mm -hmm. is so topical, is can I begin to know you, not on a demographic basis, but based on your behavior, and then Almost like epidemiology, if you're in a cohort, can I cause you to behave differently? Mm -hmm. And you know, whether it's your journey to purchase or something else. And this is very much a, you know, a, a very new thought. In financial services industries, as all of you know, the regulations are coming really fast and strong. And actually, big data can help us in that area. So if you want to transfer $100,000, you really have to tell us that this is the right money that you, you're giving us, not necessarily you're getting in some part of the world where it's not accounted for, right? For that purposes, our data and understanding what we have becomes really critical. And that becomes a way of our business life, not necessarily um, trying to influence consumers, but trying to do our business by understanding data. For me, the far more compelling piece is around usage. Mm -hmm. um, and what do we do to use that data real time to serve up very customized and tailored offerings at the moment? And how do we influence consumer behavior and maybe you know, their wallet and so forth? That is the very exciting part. But it's been very fascinating for us to sort of set up you know, uh, quasi-command centers in places. Like for example, in Tresemme we had Fashion Week. Um, which is a very big thing for one of the 27 brands that we have in the personal care por portfolio at Unilever. And so we set up command centers that are sort of real time, you know, combing all the social media sites and so forth and trying to figure out, well, what do we want to react to? And uh, I think that's really interesting from a marketeer's point of view because the understanding you can go down a very black hole if you, mm -hmm. if you like. Um, there's lots of people and resources dedicated to that, but it's what are we doing with that information? That's the most exciting. The other continuum is security and civil liberty. And that's one we'll debate as, as citizens for a long time. As long as em employees and our customers know what data do you have about me, will you tell me? Uh, that, that goes a long way toward making people feel you know, comfortable or confident. Secondly, can I have, do I have control over it? Can I opt out? Mm -hmm. uh, can I say no? Can I turn it off? And as long as you're um, behaving in a way that's consistent for the value they receive. Uh, the, the, it doesn't have to be a coupon, but some value, whether it's convenience or uh, uh, knowing me or, or providing things that are relevant to me, they seem to be more comfortable allowing us, us being you know, institutions, to have some knowledge of them at a very, very personal level.